I interviewed a, a lady who got scammed on a dating site, you know. Um, I mean, Tinder swindler. Do you understand? <laughs> so there. <laughs> there's a need that people have that these guys are able to tap into. And nobody just scams. Nobody just says, Nyak scam, mama, maliako. You know, they take you through a psychological process of, of, of really lying to you, making you believe certain things. But I think if you understand intention from someone, the second thing is you if, if it feels too good to be true, it generally is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Come let me teach you a lesson. Come let me teach you a lesson. Level line with the tweets. Follow me back to my nest. Level line with the podcast. Teach you lesson cause I got class. Level line with the impact. To be lying, that's a real fact. Come let me teach you a lesson. Come let me teach you a lesson. Level line with the tweets. Follow me back to my nest. Welcome to the Level Lion Show, the biggest marketing and entrepreneurship podcast on the African continent. And guys, before we get into today's conversation with our phenomenal guest, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and do the right things. Comment, let's have a conversation because today's topic is important if you want to handle your shmoney, honey. And I think all of us do. Petrol prices are going up. We don't know where the country's going. So let's be wise with our finances. And I couldn't think of a better person to have on this podcast today to talk about finances than Nicolette Mashile. Those of you who've been listening to the podcast will know that she's been here before. And now we're going to see her many, many years later. She's done even bigger things and she's going to teach us about even more financial products and strategies that, you know, are for the modern person in a modern world. So let's get into this podcast. And you guys know on this podcast, we don't introduce our guests, they introduce themselves. So Nicolette, hello. Hi. How are you doing after all these years? Uh, how am I doing? I'm not sure half of the time. I'm just trying to balance out whether I'm good today, yeah. tomorrow is like a different day. But I think I'm good, man. But I'm busy. Yo, look. You're busy. You know, yeah. <laughs> okay. I feel like I always say to people, I feel like I have been in in, in, in years and years and years. Yes. And then I obviously yes. at some point. And I think I'm 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 gearing closer to Puno. And once that is done, I'm done. I I am going to close doors and, and, and go and sit somewhere in a farm. And be a rich auntie. <laughs> Don't know about rich, <laughs> but hopefully there'll be an auntie who has some money somewhere. Uh, but yeah. before we go into a conversation, yeah. please tell our audience who may not know you, I'd be surprised who you are. So my name is Nicolette Mashile, also known as the Financial Bunny. Um, I run a company that does financial education content, and I think it's very important to stress that part. Um, um, simply because we figured out at some point that one needs to sprinkle a little bit of glitter on you know, finance and make it accessible to everybody. Because at the end of the day, we're going to be very honest mm -hmm. with ourselves. Money is something that we use on a daily basis. You know. Um, if, if we're going to make money predictable to anybody, the best way to do it is to educate. And I think that's what we do. I also run a community media buying agency. So again, I am, <laughs> I think from a very young age, I've been always about access. In fact, there's a story that I always tell that when I was when I was going to Rhodes University, one of the things my dad said to me is, I'm sending you to university to go and gather information and bring it to the people that don't have the privilege of being able to get a formal education. And I think that's always been about who I'm about, about access, you know, so it's access to financial education. When we do media buying, we also look it, look at it through a lens of being able to make information accessible. Mm. And I think that's, that's really who Nicolette is. When I'm feeling fancy, I say I'm magical, I'm black girl magic. Okay. <laughs> but uh, I don't know if I'm feeling very fancy today. <laughs> yeah. But you're also a presenter. You're a oh, speaker. yes. I oh, mean, you do that. so much. Get a side hustle and say all kinds. <laughs> so I work in the television industry. I must tell you also, I don't, I never went out seeking to work in TV. Mm -hmm. um, I always tell people that I actually prefer radio, where I don't need to be glammed up. I don't need to look a specific way. I, you can get the true sense of who I am and the content that I'm supposed to push. So mm -hmm. television happens to be a medium that I was lucky enough to be on. And again, information, transfer information, connecting with people. And I think, yeah, so I work in that space. Um, I also somehow found myself being an entrepreneur. And yeah, that's, that's what I do. I love that. Thank you so much for sharing what you do because 
in the conversation we're going to have, I think people will understand why you are the right person to have this conversation with us today. And guys, today's podcast is sponsored by Okta FX. You'll see their branding at the bottom of this video. Check out their platform. Click on the links in the description. It will describe everything you need to know about Forex trading. And we have Nicolette here today to just demystify a few things about investing, Forex, and how to handle your money. Mm. You know, she wouldn't be here being this amazing black girl, magic, entrepreneur, everything, without knowing how to handle her finances finances the right way yeah so where should we start this financial conversation because you've been talking about finance <laughs> we spoke about it in the other podcast but obviously there's still some new listeners and viewers so where do we start this financial conversation for the black woman who's a professional or who works that says a nurse or whatever and she wants to learn how to start getting her money right I think we start off by so a couple of years ago. Well, I mean, back in 2020, I published a book and it was called What's Your Move? And I think for me, the biggest thing that I wanted to do with that book is to make financial decision making or money management skills accessible to the ordinary man that you don't need to to feel overwhelmed mm. that you can get good at your money and i think that's always a message that i've tried to push to say you know it doesn't matter what your name is it doesn't matter what your surname is when it comes to money if you follow the money rules you will succeed it, you you almost create what is called predictability mm. you know you you can predict what is going to happen what can you expect granted the market is the market right and the market exists and there's microeconomic issues that can come into place there's macroeconomic uh, factors that can come into place but ultimately when it comes to managing your finances and really learning and honing the skill of managing your money i would like any person that is watching right now to believe that they can get to a place and i call it the the, the financial industry independent space where mm. you actually have the freedom you've yes. got the knowledge you've got the confidence you've got the comfort of knowing and you you've got the the comforts of also creating some level of predictability mm. obviously it's it's it you know nobody nobody can sit down and say i'm going to time the market so yes. when this happens for instance i'm going to invest or i'm going to trade forex or i'm going to do this nobody knows how to time the market mm. as much as people can claim they do they don't know <laughs> because nobody knows what's going to happen tomorrow you know but there are indicators so i always use and it's such a terrible example but i'm going to use it anyway i always use the weather mm. many of us rola in a in households where your mom would open the door look outside and say yes there's no way she just says that yes there's there's things in the environment there's things in the air there's there's indicators that have come to that conclusion for her yeah. and that is what for me finance also is is they are indicators that will eventually drive you to a specific conclusion mm -hmm. and that ultimately is what we want to create you know when you're making your financial decisions so we want to get you to a point where if things happen there's predictability, and if they don't work out the way you had predicted, mm -hmm. you have contingency plans. And I think that's where anybody should start, is asking themselves, Jorge, do I know what to expect? Mm -hmm. If I don't know what to expect, do I have the contingency plan for if things don't play out? Contingency plan, so, that's a big word. <laughs> <laughs> I, so for me, a contingency plan is really saying, what is my fallback plan? Mm -hmm. if, 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 let's say, Bakweta make up today, and uh, your makeup is 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 not sitting the way it was supposed to sit. Mm -hmm. What is the makeup artist going to do to ensure that it sits the way you want it to sit? So for me, a contingency plan would be an emergency fund. For instance, we saw during the hard lockdown when the emergency uh, the, the economy was slowing down and mm -hmm. and people either had to take salary cuts or income options to to or ways to earn income were literally kind of slowed down. You know, people needed emergency funds to be able to tap in, and I call it reserve funds. Mm -hmm. you you know um and for many people at that point they didn't have that contingency plan for instance a contingency plan could be your insurance policies mm. you know to say if i get into any type of loss whether it's from a short-term perspective so let's say your car gets into an accident what is my plan immediately for me to be able to get myself out of the situation so it's just making sure what the back up mm. but and i always say to people you can't back yourself up if you don't know how you walked into a certain situation yes. so for instance, if you walk in, and, and, and here's, a, here's a very simple example, uh, 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 one of my um, uh, team members said to me, I think it was maybe last year, she said, Nicolette, I'm finally going to pay my last installment on my car. I was so excited. I said to her, please go and find out what is the final installment. I will pay it for you. We'll go and celebrate. Mm. She comes back the next day, so despot, she was so down. She said, Nicolette, I've got a balloon payment. <gasps> no. So I said, okay, what's the plan? 
Okay. And the thing is, when she, when this when this car uh, credit agreement was put together, it wasn't done by her. It was done by her parents. It was a gift to her. Right, so they they put it together based on their financial uh, uh, situations, mm. but the reality is she can't put she could not put together a contingency plan because she did not know the situation that she had walked into. Yeah. So for many of us, it's like taking a jersey, you know, to a party, or taking flat shoes to a party when you're wearing heels. So we talk a contingency plan. You know, it's easy to walk into your room, your, your your bag, and pull out your flats because you 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 kind of. You don't even foretell the, the the future, but you kind of know what there may be situations that may happen that I can need this specific thing to now come into place. Isn't and I that think a that's a term fine. like ring fencing. If I'm if I'm not being weird, but like in the sense of like protecting yourself against what absolutely, could it's happen. risk mitigation yeah. and risk management, yeah. right? Um, and that's what a, a contingency plan basically is. Yeah. It's making sure I don't mind. You know what I mean? But it won't be you know. I mean I went to one of the, the nightclubs once and it was so packed. Somebody was pulling onto my wig. Wow. And at some point I said to myself, you know, you kinda make these quick decisions in your head. And at some point I was like, it's okay if it falls. Can I need a cornrows? I don't Fine. mind. Yeah. You know what I mean? But if you know what <laughs> There you are totally. So I think that's literally it. It's yeah. really trying to mitigate any type of risk and, 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 and making sure for whatever plan you've got, it helps you. And I think it's the same thing when it comes to finance. Most yeah. of us, um, at some level, we're trying to build wealth. While you're trying to build wealth, you're trying to make the right decisions so that you are mitigating any unpredictable thing that may happen. I love that. You've made it so simple and practical for mm -hmm. us. You know, I think the misconception is that if you're an intelligent lady and you work in corporate or intelligent man, that you know everything. Mm. And you actually don't. You just mm -hmm. know what you know. You yes. know, I know marketing. I don't know finance. <laughs> <laughs> so I always need to keep teaching myself yes. and we need people like you to do that. I love that you mentioned your book because I have a couple of copies of your book actually and I've read okay. it. Um, and in the beginning of your book, you actually talk about your weight loss journey. Yes. Right. And the way I saw that was you having to address yourself first. So it's more of like a mental Absolutely. thing and a spiritual thing Absolutely. before you can actually manage your money. Tell us about that. What, how do money and personality feelings that are come into play? You know, I always say, and, and the reason why I went space, I mean, I had a lot of issues when I was in varsity, you know, mm -hmm. um, at some points I sat for a whole year and not attended a single lecture. But the reason why I isolated that specific example was, I, for me, there is such a, a comparison that one can make between, um, you know, weight loss and, and, and money management. And it's, for me, you know, in weight loss, we say it's, it's not necessarily just you going to the gym. It's 80% mm -hmm. what you eat and 20% what you do in the gym. I mean, I don't know if that is a statistic that can actually be backed up, right? But often it's, it's, in, it's in language and, and people say that. And it's really just to paint the picture that there's so much more that is involved, you know? Mm -hmm. um, it would be very simplistic of us to think that, you know, uh, the, the food industry just designs food for, you know, be, they design food to be eaten. You yes. know, there's a reason why yogurt is its texture mm -hmm. and the colors of yogurt, you know, it, it's, it, it is a soft food for morning uh, 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 time consumption. consumption yeah. Do you understand? So, so there is a lot of size and technology so it would be very simplistic for us to just say no people just become fed from food or people just lose weight if they stop eating you know and all of that stuff so and I think with finance it's the same thing and because for me when I went to Rhodes University I was snitch I was like small I was a size 28 I was like in my world I was the perfect <laughs> figure the perfect size yeah. right and it's not like I woke up one day and I said you're getting fat yeah. <laughs> it happened so gradually right and I think that I put in the right principles at the beginning you know it is the eating one well, it is the understanding myself mentally, it's the understanding myself as a human being, it's going to the gym and putting all of those strategies together, the gradual weight that I would have gained would have probably been predictable for me, mm. right? And finance is literally for me the same thing, is, and I always tell a lot of young people, I say, the best time in your life to be really able to learn the best possible money management habits is when you are salary rich when you are starting out, when you don't have the big amounts of money. Because that's when you actually start learning, I have to budget, I have to do this, I have to save, I have to invest, I have to do this, right? Mm -hmm. But let's be fair, and I think it's a fair question that you ask. There are many people who know this. Yes. 
but they don't they still don't make the right decisions mm. because it it is far more complex than just saying it's a game of numbers mm. it's far more complex than just saying because we have emotion right um there'll be days when you're down mm -hmm. and the credit card will look very interesting for you to go to do, do retail therapy mm -hmm. right <laughs> it's a fact of life True. you know there'll be days when you, the market catches you off guard mm -hmm. and all of a sudden you're looking at your portfolio and you're like i'm losing here and you pull out mm -hmm. right so then there's the ego when you get home i mean for us when you get home and people are patting you based on what you have mm -hmm. on material things oh when nicolette is here Ariji, one two three four when nicolette is here Gumnandi, it's the, it's boosting your ego mm -hmm. you know there is an identity crisis that we've got some of us have to be upheld by our material things our money you know we don't have anything to anchor ourselves on you know so you may find yourself making financial decisions based on the fact that you don't actually have an anchor in terms of who you are are as a person yes. you know so you are you are anchored to material things you're anchored to brands you're anchored to this you're anchored to a good car you're anchored to a, a house you're anchored to things that you gotta show the world right then there is there is inherited beliefs also money beliefs that we have inherited or money commitments that you have made before you even were able to even say i know what interest rate is mm -hmm. one of those things is your dad may like a certain brand of a car now you're forced psychologically you have now been put into a space where you must buy that car for yes. your dad to see you as worthy of the education that he's put in the commitment so there's a lot that goes around that i think that we try to sometimes oversimplify money yes. sometimes it's situation yeah sometimes sometimes you don't earn enough yes you know so there's a whole lot that goes into it and i definitely think that the the, the concept of money personalities really exists the concept of ego exists the concept of um financial emotional intelligence exists and you know to be fair to everybody and to be fair to self you are a constant transitioning person mm -hmm. it would be very unfair to tie you to your financial decisions you know often many of us today i'll make great financial decisions tomorrow might not look the same mm -hmm. you know and i think that's why we we want to make sure that we 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 educate on the basics we want to make sure that the foundation i always say if you've got a good foundation as long as your foundation is good i think you should be okay that yes you will make the mistakes and we all may i mean i'm constantly learning i i <laughs> there's something to do with my money that i've never share with people because <laughs> you're just like because mm. people they say but you're the financial bunny yeah but i'm still human yes. you know before i become this brand that i've built around myself i'm still nicolette mm -hmm. there's still a little girl in me who wants to impress my family you know, I was thinking, <laughs> it's such a weird thing, because my mom turned 60, so my dad turned 60, I bought my dad a car. Mm. Now my mom is turning 60, now I'm sitting there and I'm like, okay, so it's like a jar, you man, Jelana, right? Yeah. Sharp, let's say we, are, we get to the point where I say, I want to buy my mom a car, Yeah. right? Which car am I buying her? Am I buying the car for Nicolette, that makes Nicolette look good, as the financial bunny? Am I buying the car that my mom will afford to buy petrol, mm -hmm. pay insurance? Do you get what I'm saying? So there's these two Nicolettes that I'm constantly having to, to balance out. So people, we, we, we all need to be very kind to ourselves when it comes to our finances to remember that there's still a little girl, there's still a little, girl, there's still a Nic little Nicolette, there's yeah. still the imposter syndrome that I still have, that sometimes I look at a decision and maybe it's a big investment opportunity and I'm like, I should go for it, but ew, who, who do I think I am to be mm. going for such things? Yes. And, 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 it, it, and that's what it is. That it, for me, it builds a persona that you need to be okay with and be able to back up. If you can back yourself up, I mean, you, you can do whatever you want. That's, that's my belief. I love what you're saying, especially mm. in relation to the conversation we're going to have about Forex. Mm. Because you and I, before we went on, we were talking about fake Forex accounts, yes. right? Yes. Where they'll have your picture, my picture, whoever's picture, and they'll say Forex trader. Yeah. And I think those people really try to leverage off of that emotional thing Absolutely. that people have with money. Absolutely. So I think it's important for us to talk about how do you identify the difference between Nicolette's page, mm. a financial educator versus... Mm. Nicolette FX1, mm. <laughs> you know, on social yes. media, how do we tell the difference? Look, I mean, I mean, I mean, obviously, with with the different social media, I think from a from a a, a, a non um, a finance base, the different social media channels have their indicators and trust factors in terms of how do you how do you follow the right person, right? Mm -hmm. But I do think also intention is important. You know, when you are having a conversation with somebody who's calling themselves label lion, what is that person's intention? Mm -hmm. Right? 
if if out of the blue somebody who is supposedly a label line starts saying, yeah, but I'm selling marketing <laughs> strategies and you can, your account, you, your Instagram can have double the numbers in 24 hours. Selling your dream. It's a dream. Yeah. And you know that the, the if, if, if you listen, and you know, I always say people are sometimes committed to what they want to hear, mm -hmm. you know? So if you, if you are in a space where you have now been told that you need to have a, a social media following with high numbers, and here comes this label lion profile saying, I'm going to double your numbers in 24 hours, the chances are you may fall for it. Mm -hmm. But you know label. Has Label ever told you that she can double your numbers? Mm -hmm. why, why doesn't Label put this out in the public? Mm -hmm. Why have you never heard the real Label go on air and say, I can double your numbers? Why is that the Label that's telling you this is the Label that's on social media behind the screen? Mm -hmm. So I think sometimes intention is important for all of us. I think we need, we need to guard against our flaws as humans and our flaws is sometimes it's easy stuff, it's greed, it's, you know, um, if somebody says to you, I can double your money in 48 hours. Why bang at the Do you know what I mean? If, 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 why, why are you so concerned about Nicolette's finances? Why are you so concerned about my finances? Why don't you double your money? You know? So I think sometimes as a person, and, 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 and mind you, I'm not going to sit here and be holier than thou. I understand being scammed. And I understand how one can get scammed. You know, mm -hmm. people do, these guys are, uh, I mean, they've, they've kind of figured out the system of how to scam people. As you said, they work on your psychology. They work on the things that you need, you know. Um, I interviewed a, a lady who got scammed on a dating site, you know. Um, I mean, Tinder swindler. Do you understand? <laughs> <We're> so there. <laughs> there's a need that people have that these guys are able to tap into. And nobody just scams. Nobody just says, Nyak scam a man, You know, they take you through a psychological process of, of, of really lying to you, making you believe certain things. But I think if you understand intention from someone, the second thing is you if, if it feels too good to be true, it generally is. Mm -hmm. Right? Thirdly, if I am a forex trader, for instance, and I'm doing so well that on my page, kitty, kitty by four by four, <laughs> these shiny cars and all of these, why do I need other people? Where do they enter? Mm. Because, because I figured it out. So why do I need, because if I say, I can turn your 1,000 and make it 10,000 in two weeks, why don't I find my own 1,000 and make it 10,000 in two? You know, so I think sometimes as people, we also need to stop and double take. Mm -hmm. We, we in, 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 in spending, there's a, a psychology about consumer behavior that we speak about and we say, if you want to guard yourself from yourself, sometimes take a, a 24 hour lapse to say, do I really need to buy this thing, right? So that you don't become an impulsive buyer. Mm -hmm. I think even with these types of things, stop and think. Just stop. You know, I love notice accounts because notice accounts, you got to put in a notice and then only after a certain amount of days with a seven day notice or 48 hour or 32 days, then you get the, the thing. Instant gratification is also very dangerous mm -hmm. for our society. Then we also live in a society that everything is microwave. You know, we, we do want success. <sighs> Things... <laughs> You know, if, if you know, I tell you to people, if you've been on this journey with me from 2016, you, you've kind of seen the build. And, and, and I think it's important that we speak more about the build. I think a lot of people think that they blink and, and things happen. Mm -hmm. There's no such a thing. Guys, if it was that easy, we would all be successful. Yep. You know, we would all be successful if it was that. I always say, if you guys, if we really think, for instance, and we're using Forex as, trading as an example, if you really think that it's that easy, in every single bank, there are a group of people who work in that space. Why would they not just leave their jobs and do this on their own mm -hmm. and make huge amounts of money? You know, there's a lot of risk. There's a lot of leverage that takes place. There's a lot of, there's a lot of, you literally need to also understand the markets. There's a lot that goes into it. It's not something that somebody can sell to you. video i five. There's no way. Yeah. You know, there's absolutely no way. And I think it's important that when you are dealing with anybody on social media, you're dealing with anybody that says, I can teach you this, ask yourself what is their intention? What are they trying to get out of it? Mm -hmm. mm.
I like that. I think that's a very simple way to mm -hmm. navigate through that space because there are lots of forex accounts, of right? Of course, yeah. So it gets a bit hard to manage. So that's very, that's a simple way. I hope you guys took down notes. <laughs> Don't come in my DM and ask me because Nicolette's just giving you the blueprint. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're sitting now, we're talking about finances mm. and we're about to talk about forex, which mm. is kind of investing. It's a, it's a type of investing. Mm. And someone's watching and they're going, Ah, uh, but like, I don't actually earn that much. So is this conversation even applicable to me? When can a person start investing? What should I be earning? How should my money be looking for me to start investing? So the beauty of making money, you know, there's, there's several ways of making money and, 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 and investing ultimately depends on what you want to invest in. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about investing, right, we're talking about you taking a longer approach at looking at different markets. And I want to, because often when we talk about investing in a country like South Africa, wait, it was quite an elite process that was, you know, happening behind closed doors. You didn't know what's doing it. You just sent your money. Somebody then says that your portfolio has grown. You don't really know where, what is actually happening. Investing is really as taking your money, putting it into something and getting an appreciation, a growth from it. So you buy this cup at 10 rand, right? Mm -hmm. Because the cup market is going to grow. Mm -hmm. And then in the cup market, cups then grow, the cup market grows. And let's say you bought this at 10 rand and the cup market goes to 20. And because you looked at the market, you looked at the trends, you looked at the possibilities of the cup market growing, mm -hmm. then the, mark, the cup is now 20 rand. And you go back and say, I'm going to sell my cups at however many cups you've bought at 20 rand and I've made a return. Mm. So the price of cups has gone up. The market of cups has actually grown. That's essentially what investing is, Okay. right? Now, you then also said something about Forex. Forex has, they, there are people who can take an investment approach to Forex, but generally Forex is trading. Okay. So as with Forex, what you are looking at is you're looking more on returns instead of necessarily looking at whether the market is going to grow. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about Forex trading, we're talking about the exchange. So it's, Forex is actually a, an acronym for foreign, foreign exchange, mm -hmm. right? So there's an exchange of currencies that's, that's happening. So let's say, for instance, you live in America and you earn in dollars. And I live in South Africa and I earn in rands, right? There's always an exchange value for your one dollar and one of my one rands. So there's a specific amount of rands I need to pay to get your one dollar. And there's a specific amount of dollars you need to pay to get my one South African rand, mm -hmm. right? And that's what Forex exchange is. It's about exchanging currencies. So generally when you are trading Forex, it's quick. It's either a day, 48 hours, or quarterly. You are looking at what potentially could move in, in those various markets that will change the value of the currencies that you are dealing with. Mm -hmm. And at any point, you're always dealing with, a, with, with two currencies, right? Because you've got to look at two currencies. So it, 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 it's basically called a currency pairing, right? Wait, wait, wait. Before you go deep yes. into that, <laughs> yes. firstly, why are we trading currencies? Like, what's the point? It, you make money. It's a, it's a form of making money. Okay. Right? So let's take, take away currencies. Yeah. As long as I'm a we're trading marbles because we believe that one marble may be worth more than another marble, right? But because we are the people playing Amamabul, we will say, we'll say, okay, no, the red ones are no longer valuable. Mm -hmm. So I could change my one red one or, or five red ones and you would give me a green marble. Now the green marbles are more valuable. So that's basically what it, is. it comes down to value. Okay. So when we're saying, for instance, the dollar and the rand, right, there's going to be what we call a movement in the currency values. Mm -hmm. So I want to use a very simplistic uh, example. So let's say for one dollar, one American dollar, we pay 10 South African rands. It's an example, right? Mm -hmm. Hypothetical, right? What a Forex trader is looking to predict is what which direction is there going to be a movement mm -hmm. so which so either the rand will gain or the rand will lose yes right so let's look at that example what do we mean by that when we say the rand is going to gain strength mm -hmm. the rand will gain strength if now for nine rand i can get one american dollar so remember it was originally 10 rand and you gain an American dollar. So, so, it's less expensive. It, so the dollar kind of loses a yes. value. And that is a movement, mm. right? And that's how people make their money. So if you've now bought a whole lot of, 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 of South African rands, 
with, 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 with your dollars, right? When you now exchange back, you may find that you have lost money as a, as a dollar holder in terms of the value from a South African uh, Rand perspective. And Do you get what I'm saying? Absolutely. Yes. And what affects the movement? So there's various currency. things. And yeah. that's why even within Forex, there are different strategies that one can look at, right? Mm -hmm. So they can be things like David's. You know, uh, let's say, let's say Chakanyahu and the boys, as I call them, <laughs> the, right? They're going to make a, a decision on interest rates, yeah. whether they're going to change the repo rates. That can affect how the, the, the rand behaves. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the, 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 the reasons are even far from us. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's something happening in the, the American the war, economy, the, the war, the Ukraine yeah. war, you know? So sometimes it's far away. And remember, we're an emerging market. Mm -hmm. So our, 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 our currency is quite volatile, and it, 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 it really does respond to a number of events that could happen, right? So there's a, there's a whole number of things that can happen within a macro uh, uh, economic sphere and in a microeconomic space that can really make or create, and people say movements, I call them little fluctuations yes. that happen because it's not a huge jump. <laughs> you know, you don't wake up one day and all of a sudden it is 20 rand for one United States dollar. It's, 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 it's radical, or I mean, not radical, it's gradual changes that are happening. Mm. That is why we then say, it's not often easy to just say, I'm going to buy uh, uh, with a thousand rand or I'm going to uh, thingy, uh, trade with a thousand rand and, uh, and there's going to be a big jump and I'm going to make 10,000. Uh, come on, man. Hey, please. Hey. Mm. Right. But there are strategies that people have, 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 have put together. Forex traders who've been doing this for years have those strategies where they've created, again, going back to that thing of predictability. It happens even when you're investing in other assets. Let's talk about investing in livestock, for instance. Mm -hmm. Right. We all know, all of us, most of us know. South Africa. And we know there's often a slight price change when we start moving into the summer months of 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 of, of, of um of the, the season, of the season yeah. right? So and and the, the more festive months, and I'm using a very simplistic example. Mm. So the prices of livestock, especially livestock that we use within our ceremonies, often it's got like those slight changes that yeah. you can think. So if you, for instance, are buying a hundred cows. At 5,000 rand, there's a certain amount of money you're going to pay, I can pay, uh, pay for them, right? Then you say, okay, I'm waiting for December, but I figure, December, guys, I can push even to make a price of a cow, I can push it to be 6,000 rand. Mm -hmm. You're making a profit, right? Because now you bought at 5,000, 100 cows at 5,000, now you're selling them at six. But you've also got to calculate the costing of, of, of keeping these cows and all of that stuff. And that's essentially what you are doing. It's, it's almost like running a business, mm -hmm. you know? And, and that's why investing is so different from trading, but at the same time, it does require the same level of commitment. I think often people think that, you know, you can just trade and, 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 and be lucky through, through and through. You may be lucky once, you may be lucky twice, mm -hmm. but it does need you to sit down and craft an actual strategy. Ask, and there's a whole lot that you gotta ask. You gotta ask what type of person, trading persona do you have? Mm -hmm. Are you the high risk, high return person? Because they, it's, it's actually high risk, high potential return. It's not yes. always going to be a, 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 a high return, you know? Are you that type of a risk taker? Or are you somebody that wants to read the charts a little bit more and stay with the chart, you know? Then you are trading over a longer period, you know? Uh, same thing, investing, you've got to ask yourself, what type of an investor am I? Am I investing in the stock market, which is far more volatile than cash, if I'm investing in cash? You know, am I investing in real estate, which is probably another volatile market than, you know, if I was selling commodities, and, and we talk everyday commodities, not your, 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 your precious metals yeah. and your, your, your staple foods, you know? So it's, it really is about creating a persona of, am I, if I'm an, an investor, Actually, I've got a very good example for you. Okay. <laughs> gambling. Yes. I'm going to gambling. Soccer. Let's use football. Gambling on football, right? You, there, there are people who will go on there, on those platforms. I is a win parents, right? There are people who go there and say, I is a win parents, mm -hmm. right? Who's the people who say, parents is a win? Sometimes it's emotion because we are turn the parents. Sometimes it's the team that they're playing against because we settle up hands, right? But you can still get shocked at the result. Yes. 
Then there are people that you can see have dedicated their life to create a strategy of how to pick their teams, <laughs> how to, they look at the odds, they mm -hmm. look at, you know, past performance, they look at games, they look at the, no, when Pirates plays at home, it's better, or when the Pirates plays away, they are better, or when they play at Dobsonville Stadium, or Magdalena Epolokwane Stadium, they bring in all of those factors into play, right? Now, a person like that can still come to a Nicolette and say, Namsanji, Pirates can you win. But because the Aitan, the Pirates, the Aitan, we are Salawe. This person will say, I have done all, I have worked out all the odds. It, the odds are against Pirates. But because of emotion, because of the type of investor I am, or the type of gambler I am, or the type of trader I am, I am going to go also with what I have created as my guiding principles for spe choosing specific things. Yeah. And I think that's the, that's the most important thing that all of us need to understand is that you have to have a strategy, whether you are trading, whether you are investing, whether you are doing gambling, because I mean, you know, when we're gambling, we all, uh, sometimes we just go with a hunch, you know, can yes. I a hunch, you know? Yeah. So, so for me, there's always a strategy that does need to be involved in what it is that you are doing. And that thing of saying, how did you get to this decision? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What kind of person should be considering Forex trading instead of other types of investments? I mean, uh, not investments, but trading options or whatever the case may be, or, m or money making options. Why choose trading or why consider trading? I think there are people who want easy wins sometimes, or quick wins rather, and I mean not say easy, quick wins. I think there are people who want quick wins, people who don't have the appetite for the long-term requirement of investing. Because as I said, investing does take a long time. You, 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 you are often hearing people say your investment horizon needs to start even from you know, three years and above. Some people don't have the patience to wait for that. Some people are what we call um, income investors, you know, or, or you know, income traders. You know, they want to put their money into something and it must give them a return immediately you know so so it depends on who you are what i've also found that it depends on where you are in life mm -hmm. you know um <laughs> we we say people mustn't delve into cryptocurrency but when somebody has done what they need to do in terms of having long-term investments short-term investments why shouldn't they go into cryptocurrency for instance if it's something that is part of their asset allocation you know, um, why shouldn't they go into forex trading if it's something that they want to tap into and delve into and possibly create another form of income? Mm -hmm. So I think I think it's it is important to understand your risk profile as a person. So when we talk about your risk profile, it's your risk appetite. Um, and your risk appetite is not just about your personality and your persona. It's also about how much money do you have? Mm -hmm. Because you can have a very high appetite for risk, but if there's the last money that you have and it's money that you need to do other things, then you should not be going for such a, a, a high risk uh, a trading or investing, right? You should be looking at your more conservative ways of making money. Mm -hmm. So I I think I think there's there's it's it, at any point anybody can say why they want to become a trader or why they would want to be an investor. It really depends on where the person is and what they are trying to achieve out of that. I think that's important. I agree with you, and it's making me ask because it can be very easy to confuse a financial goal yes. to an investment goal. Yes. So what are the differences? So for instance, you you may have a financial goal that says. Um, you know, it, it's something that is attached to you having to spend a certain amount of money to be able to achieve it, right? So let's say you say, I have a financial goal to maybe at the end of this year buy myself a, a car, or I want to put down a 10% deposit on a house, right? And then there's an investment goal to say, and, and, and that financial goal, I always say, needs to be you sitting down and saying, when do I want to achieve this goal? Mm. How will I achieve this goal? Am I being realistic in achieving this goal? Right? So you can have investment financial goals that are investment goals that are tied okay. hand in hand because you could have a financial goal of saying, by the time I get to retirement, I want to have 20 uh, uh, rental properties, for instance. So it is a financial goal because it's going to require finance for you to be able to get there. So, but it is also an investment goal in terms of the time period that you are giving yourself. So we always yeah. talk about SMART goals, right? Yes. And one of those, um, ac uh, the, the, the acronym SMART, the T stands 
for time. It must be time bound. You must be able to say, Lebu wants to buy this and she must she's giving herself this amount of time to be able to achieve it. So I think it's 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 for me the differentiator between a financial goal and an investment goal will always sometimes come with a more of the time period of how long do you have to achieve it. One of your financial goals could could be to be financially independent, mm -hmm. or it could be you could be part of the fire community, and yes. that is to retire as early as possible. Or you could uh, be uh, have a financial goal that is tied to um, that uh, you know what is it called where they're very simplistic they don't in buy material the things minimalist. the minimalist yeah. yes your financial goal could be this year i just want a budget mm -hmm. so it's it's attached to you know your financial life and your financial sta standing and your financial status okay. um whereas uh, a, a, an investment goal i think does have sometimes a tangible thing that you are working towards you know so it could be you saying um I want a portfolio or retirement. Retirement is actually such a great investment goal um, because we ultimately all touch wood will get to retirement years where we are unable to work, right? And you want, you can craft now the type of retirement that you want. You know, you can craft in, in terms of how much you want to earn in retirement, what you want your life to look like from a financial perspective. And you've got the years to sit with the financial planner and say, this is where I want to end up. See, so that I can get here. Whereas you could have a financial goal today that says, um, at the end of this year, I want to have paid off my debt, you know, so how do I again, it is also sitting again with a financial planner or a debt counselor and saying, I have three accounts that I want to pay off at the end of the year. Is it possible? Then you've given it a time, you've, it's realistic for you because you may have the excess amount. There's a strategy, whether you're using the snowball method, the avalanche method, using um, cash flow index to figure out how do I get to this debt free financial goal. Love it. Love it. Can I invest if I have debt? Whew. <laughs> you know, from a, it's, 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 it, you know, the beautiful thing about personal finance is that at the end of the day, it's, it's personal. So the short answer is yes. Okay. Of course you can. What's stopping you from doing so? The debt. The debt, right? <laughs> <laughs> what I'm saying is it, it's possible. And we've seen many people who, will for instance come and have a conversation with me and they'll say something and i'll give you a, a very twisted example right they'll say something like nicolette i i am in debt i want to pay off my debt but i also feel like i need to start investing the, so i look at two things i always say do you have stock fell because many people have stock fells right so in that stock fell where are you guys keeping the stock fell money no we are just uh, keeping it in a savings account and i'm like well you could invest with that money so already you have created an investment line in your in your uh, uh, budget. So that means that channel rechannel that stock for money so that it works for you rather than it just sitting in a savings account and it's not necessarily working for you. So you're you've essentially already started investing in that manner because at the, again, label the biggest problem when we talk about investing is that people think that there is these formal structures where you must invest. Yes, we've got those formal structures. And they need to be registered with the FSCA simply because what we want to do is to ensure that people are not taken for the ride, right? Mm -hmm. But they are, I mean, it's not like if you're going to go buy in Gomo, there's going to be somebody at the FSCA goods you level and has bought cows, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Um, but you could essentially see it as a form of investing. Entrepreneurship in itself is a form of investing, right? So, so I do think that yes, you can invest while you have debt. However, one of the biggest things that we always speak about is, 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 is also paying off your high interest rate um, um, loans yeah. or your high interest rate debt, right? And that's because it takes a huge chunk of your cash flow. It's expensive debt. And anything that is expensive debt is going to be a detriment to how you are able to put money back into it growing. Mm -hmm. So for instance, in my book, I, I think one of my chapters is the best investment you can make is to pay off high interest rate debt. Because let's be fair, if you're being charged 17%, you know, it's it, it, on, on a debt, you know, opportunity, co opportunity cost, where would you have received the return of 17%? So you could essentially give yourself back that 17% exactly. by paying that debt off, right? Um, but we do have a principle that says pay yourself first. 
and in paying yourself first is mean it means that after the tax man has taken their chunk your money has hit your bank account the first person you should be paying is yourself and how do you pay yourself i've got a simple analogy i call it the apple analogy i say if you earn 10 apples two one of those apples needs to go in underground and that's you planting that apple, right? And so that that's is investing. Saving. That's investing. investing. Okay. Right? The other needs to go into the deep freezer. And that's the saving. Because okay. with saving, it sits in the deep freezer. You'd never know when you're going to need it. But when you need it, you want it to come immediately. Okay. But whereas when you are chalaring and you are, you are now planting, you don't know if that plant is going to grow one. You don't know if when the apples are going to actually come out, right? But one day you may wake up to an, oh, an apple orchard. Do you get what I'm saying? So I know this sounds really silly, but you must never invest your savings. Is that what you're saying? No. So 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 you've got. To, so I say you must give your money KPIs. Okay. Right. Yeah. The same way when you go to a job, I offer a list of KPIs because they are trying to create predictability in terms of what label is going to give us in this job. Mm. We all have an understanding and we're all on the same page in terms of what do we expect to get from Ulebu Lion, right? you got to do the same thing with your money. So if you're taking your money and you are saying, I'm putting my money in a savings account, you've got to understand that in a savings account, there is a high chance that that money may not become a, a, an investment because it may not grow to becoming an investment. So yes. if it's key, so I always say hundred meter line or hundred meter race. You're all standing at the start at the start line. When you are saving, you and inflation are running. You inflation and fees of whatever you're saving are all running together, and you're going to cross the line there together. Mm. So the value of your money stays the same. You you are able to access your money when you need it. So for instance, you have an emergency, you are able to access the money, but the buying power of your money is not lost because where you have put it, it's still maintaining its value mm. because it is keeping up with inflation or even slightly beating inflation because you also got to beat the fees, right? Then when you are investing, you want to start at the start. When you cross the finish line of the 100 meters, your money needs to be ahead of fees, inflation, and all of that. So your money needs to be more valuable. Mm -hmm. So your, it's either your money needs to be more valuable, the asset you've bought needs to be more valuable, so that you actually are going to get a return from your money. Mm -hmm. So essentially, that's why I say with the apple analogy, you've got 10 apples. The one needs to go underground. We are chala. The next one needs to go into the deep freezer because that's the one for the emergencies. That's the one for the holidays. That's the one where we pretend like we don't know Jorge Lebo's got a friend who's got a birthday in, in June and Guamelo Tengwe present or we're going to dinner Be because now you forgot all of this. You are able to tap into this without actually interfering with all of the things that you need to pay. Mm -hmm. So the other eight apples, you pay for your life, your living expenses, your insurance, your debt, everything that you need to pay for. So that if this thing comes up, you open the freezer, you throw your apple, you move on with your life. And what you don't do is to steal from the other areas of your life. Mm. This one that you are challering, one day you wake up and you've got a whole farm of apple trees. Now you can take your apples, you can put them apple sauce, apple tarts, apple whatever you want to do, you sell, you are now building wealth. Mm. And I think for me that is important, is understanding that the biggest rule we've got when it comes to money is you can't spend every single thing that you make. Yes. Because what happens, it's what we saw during the hard lockdown is that people were living paycheck to paycheck. So the money comes in, they spend it, and often you have a conversation, but what happens the day there's an economic interruption in your life? Now you're finding yourself in a situation where you don't have investments to pull from, you don't have savings to pull from, so where do you usually go? Most of us usually go to debt. And by the time you're going to that type of debt, or credit rather, not debt, by the time you go to that credit, you are now, remember we spoke about how sometimes you know the right thing to do, but you don't do it. Mm -hmm. Imagine you find yourself in a situation where they cut your salary by half, and all of a sudden now you don't have emergency funds, you don't have any savings or investments to pull from, so now, credit becomes the next step. But because you're so desperate for money, how do you, how do we fairly expect you to sit there and say, when they say to you, we're willing to give you a credit card of 40,000, but we're gonna charge you an interest rate of 17. How do you rightfully say to the bank, I bought not 17%? Exactly. Because you are in a desperate position. Mm. So that's why we say sometimes, you know, when we make financial decisions, sometimes we are put in a corner mm. because we didn't do the contingency plan. So, and that is why I say, yes, you may be able to invest while you have debt. But don't allow yourself to be in a situation where the opportunity cost of investing is smaller than 
paying off your debt mm -hmm. or the other way around where the opportunity cost of investing may be bigger than you know paying off your debt that's why for me the apple analogy as simple as it sounds is probably one of the best ways to look at it is that at any point make sure something a young to your savings yeah. something a young to an investment because i promise you the day you need it 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 comes as the huge it's such a huge relief to be able to say Hey, go bad. <laughs> Mara, at least I can pull from this and pull from that and pull from that. And the reason why we want you to have a savings account instead of just investing, label, is because at any point, the reason why we can't time the market when we're investing, it's also sometimes difficult to time the market when you want your money back. Mm -hmm. So you may look now, the stock market is taking a beating. Cryptocurrency is taking a beating. So if you've put your money in those markets while they are taking a beating, what if you are now finding yourself in a situation where you don't have savings, you do have investments, you need to pull out of investments. And remember, you only realize a loss when it comes to your investments if you do sell lower than what you bought. Exactly. And, and the reality is the market changes. Mm. So what do you do? You can't say to the market, <laughs> September. The market is right because I'm going to need this money. You know what exactly. I mean? You have to ride the fluctuations of the market. Mm. That's why saving in an account that is interest bearing, that can keep up with inflation, hold value of your money is important. Because when something happens and it's unpredictable and you did not uh, 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 foresee it coming, you are able to tap into your savings account and say, I'm unscathed. Yeah. I will start again with savings. But for now, for today, be sharp. Should I, as a person, let's say I want to trade Forex, right? Yes. Should I be using my Forex gains to invest? Should I be using it to save? Should I be using it for, you know, expenses that I have? What's the smart thing to do with the gains you make from Forex? Comes back again to what are, what, what are you doing? So, for mm -hmm. instance, you may find somebody that is, 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 is trading Forex, but they've got property, they've got, you know, they're in the bond market, they're in the, they've got a portfolio in the stock market, they've got, so for, for with the Forex, mm. so I can do whatever it is that I want. I mean, the, the correct answer for everybody is reinvest, right? Yeah. That's the correct answer. We, <laughs> it's the simplest thing that we'll say to people is you got to reinvest not only in, 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 the, in, in, in the asset that you are buying, you got to also reinvest in yourself. So get more educated, buy better equipment, get this, get that, get this, get that, right? So reinvesting is always going to be the noblest thing that we can say to people mm. but my situation and your situation don't look the same so you may find that for you it, it, trading forex you just it's, it's an additional income that you are using perhaps maybe to spend on your so so ramit sethi speaks about money dials and basically what he says is that every single one of us has a money dial right so what does it mean when you have a money dial it basically means that there's no one thing in your life that you are so blind to that you will pay any amount of money for and then to be quite fair that one thing if you don't satisfy it it will always be at the back of your mind mm. so you can try do the right things and we've seen people what they do is in their in the, when they do their budgets <laughs> they'll allocate a huge chunk of money to investing and a huge chunk to savings mid man by island of food mm. because they want to satisfy the money dial so he says in your budget make sure that you are making space for that money dial for some people the reality is they may not be able to afford to make space for that money dial right let's say for instance you're a sneaker head and we are stand that sneakers man where you are quite now on sites that is sneakers right and you want to buy you want to be able to get to a point where you're buying yourself sneakers every single month but you actually can't afford it with the income that you currently have mm. you could say i'm going to allocate a portion of my money to trading and whatever my wins are i'm going to use that to buy i'm going to reward myself by buying myself my sneakers so what you don't do is you you've created a small portion of your money in your budget to trade right but when you do make the gains in trading then you take that money and you buy yourself sneakers mm. do you get what i'm saying yeah. so it doesn't disturb the rest of your budget but you could be somebody that says actually i'm invest i'm trading so that i can invest so you can say i'm i'm, I'm I, I do take a bit of my money again because let's say you want to buy for instance you want to buy property Right? And from, a, from your income that you make, if you've got one source of income, for instance, you may not be able to ever get to you know, the property. You may be able to put away maybe 
two thousand rand every single month, a thousand rand for, for for a property. But because of the time that you've given yourself to maybe put down a deposit for a house, let's say you need fifty thousand rand as a deposit, you realize that I can't get this fifty thousand rand in less than six months. So what do I do? Then you can say, actually, I know how to trade. I've created a strategy, even if it's small gains, but I know that I can channel that money into my deposit. Mm -hmm. So we all have various ways in which we can say we're using our gains. What we don't want people to do is not be sure of what it is that they are trying to do. Mm -hmm. We don't want you also to, to get blinded by the games because often it happens, right? It happens even at, 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 <laughs> at, a, at, at a casino, right? People get addicted to gambling because at some point they get addicted to the win instead of looking whether the win actually makes sense or not. Yes. Because you can lose, 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 have one big win, but then go in again, lose, 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 and have one big win. <laughs> you know, you're not actually sitting down and saying, calculating, good, okay, what is the cost of the win? And I think it's important to understand the cost of the win so that you actually know what to do with your gains. Because sometimes you get a big gain and you can multiply that money. You can multiply it by putting it in other areas of the market. You know, it's, it's not just about trading. You could take your money and put it into the stock market. You could take your money, put it in the bond market. You could take your money, support a, an entrepreneur who needs an angel investor. So there's various ways in which you can use your gains. I think it is up to and dependent on you mm -hmm. as label and when you understand what it is that you are doing it, it, it i mean people you do network marketing yes well, you know um they they may be selling network mark or they may be doing network marketing and selling a specific product um part-time maybe they've got a full-time job then they'll say to you no i only use this money to pay for petrol you know so there is something that we always attach to our gains you need to figure out what that is but the noble thing we'll always say is reinvest Yes, I like that. I think what I'm getting from everything you're saying is have a goal. Absolutely. When you're intentional with your money, then Absolutely. it's much harder to get scammed. It's much harder to lose because you actually know where you're going and what you're mm. trying to do. Mm. What is your advice, parting words, for anyone watching this who's saying, ah, maybe I'm interested in forex trading. Mm. What's your advice to them as African people on the African continent? I think education. Look, I, I mean, we don't, get, we, don't, we don't make enough money. Okay, so let me, let me put it this way. My biggest plight, is it plight, is that the English word? I could say, what are you trying the to P -L -I -G -A, say? P-L-I-G-A, plight. Yeah. My biggest plight for Africans is for us to establish a mindset of making money. I think there's too much and, 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 and guard it so, and it's important that we, we, t we teach people how to, sp how to save, how to invest, how to spend wisely and all of that. But in the same breath, we need to teach our people how to make money. Mm. This reduction mentality for me needs to come to a point where it stops right we, we 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 speak about africans not earning enough it's not a lie it's a fact mm -hmm. right it's a fact of life we don't earn enough you know and for for the for the value that we are exchanging right how do we move forward from this it's we do create spaces where we get educated on how to make money mm -hmm. you know one thing i always say to people <laughs> making money one can say it's easy one can say it's difficult the reality is it happens so in between the two, in between difficult and easy, we need to find the common ground where it's a mm. you know? And, and, and that common ground is let's find ways to make money. Let's be a more productive society. Um, and it may sound very privileged for me to say that because you can do this, you can do this, you have resources like this, you have resources like that. I, I, I also want us to get into a position where we, we, we start exploring. Mm -hmm. We explore a little bit more, you know, um, and we don't get fooled into this idea that things are going to come easy. I think that's the biggest problem is that we get fooled into this idea that things are going to be easy. And, and we have our day-to-day -day challenges, you know. Um, it may just be difficult for you when you have a day-to-day -day challenges and when you're trying to just get through putting food on the table to, to, to have a, a productive mentality and, and, and not be reduction, become a reductionist. But the reality is we need to share more ideas on how to make money. And I think that one way to do it is also by really educating ourselves mm -hmm. uh, is understanding the principles of money understanding the systems that run money whether it's the fiat system the banking system whether it's this new um uh, 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 cryptocurrency what is it called um 
there's a name for, for, for the system itself, you know, decentralized. You know, we, yeah. we need to understand how these systems work and we need to find a way to fit ourselves into the system from, as we always say, African solution. I mean, African problems need African solutions. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's to listen to the likes of your your Dave Ramsey's and your uh, Suze Osman and your Ramit Sethi's and all of these great guys who say amazing things, but they've crafted those solutions based on the economies that they work and live in. You know, it, to speak about things like leverage, to speak about paying off your debt, to speak about do this, go into this. I mean, you, as a forex trader, network, <laughs> internet, you know, all of those things, you gotta, that's why I say it is important to craft, you know, it, people always ask this question, how does a system like Mbessa work in Kenya and it doesn't work in South Africa? It's incredible. You yeah. do the research and it's incredible because those guys don't even think of banking. Mm -hmm. You have a conversation, do you have a phone? That's the first question you ask. I went to Zimbabwe the other day, or the other, a couple of months ago, and kukuluma yes. cash. Some of the ATMs don't even have money, you know? So how do you then go to somebody like that and say, no, but you must, you must save your money in an interest-bearing account at the bank? At the bank? Which bank are you talking about? You know? Mm -hmm. So I think it's important for us that we, we, we start looking at our unique economies and our unique situations, and we educate ourselves on them educate ourselves on them and then when we're done educating because education is is mm. you go and put in the work guys that was nicolette mashile and as usual she gives us a run for our money with all the information that she has to share please if you are interested in trading forex or you want to know more about Opta fx Look at the description below, read everything. We put the links, everything. And you can also contact the team. I put all the details there so you can understand more about Forex trading. Nicolette, thank you so much for thank being you. on the podcast. We love you here. Thank you so You know much. this, like we could have a conversation for hours and hours and hours. And I hope you'll be back in two, three years time when we're shooting from somewhere fantastic and amazing and different. Absolutely, um, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Guys, don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Do all the things that you need to do to get this podcast seen and heard by everyone that you know. And don't forget that on this podcast we say, that's our parting saying is, the best way to eat an elephant is one bite at a time.